Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to our third lecture the lesson on real numbers now that we have this set of numbers rational and uh, irrational we want to do lot of things to them uh, first we start to building our vocabulary in our terms of real numbers uh, so let's start with the closure property the closure property that i want to talk to you with you first it says that if i let x and y be any real numbers let's use our math symbols here x and y are elements of r that says they are any real numbers then the set of real numbers is closed with respect to addition and multiplication let me write this out so x plus y and x times y both are always our real number this is a property called as closure property let's spend few time on this because this might be new to some folks basically closure property is a way of saying uh, think of a box it's closed right and there is also an open box now the closed box says i can't leave the set i am always in so if you think about this is why i need to mention complex numbers here little bit let me ask you a question tell me is there any way that you add two real numbers and get a complex number as a result it is not possible right the answer is definitely no if you add subtract multiply or divide i mean if with any of this basic arithmetic operation inside the real numbers it is a guarantee that you will get back another real number only yeah there is no way to leave the set correct so just to show you something that is not close let's take an example of a set that is not closed did you remember the set of whole numbers yes it is just a zero included with the set of natural numbers right So let's look at this whole number set. We start with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dot 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 dot. I think this much is enough for the time being. And now let's look at the operation under subtraction. Okay. If I say to you that my universe is the whole numbers. that means that i can only use whole numbers and nothing more than that and we are talking about subtraction operation okay there are some things that i can do that uh, let's take uh, 7 and 5 and 7 minus 5 so 7 minus 5 equals 2 which is a whole number for sure right 7 minus 5 is certainly a whole number and uh, and i have not left my set of whole numbers yeah but now let's consider the opposite the inverse that is 5 minus 7 but now if my universe is a whole numbers and i look at 5 minus 7 5 minus 7 equals minus 2 but since my universe is a whole number i don't know what is a minus 2 is yeah nobody knows it's a mystery right so the point is i have left my set of whole numbers whatever this is even if you want to say this is minus 2 the point is it is not an element of the whole numbers yeah i have left the set yes i need to consider more numbers somewhere out there and this is the beauty of working with real numbers under this basic arithmetic operations that you get them all completely there is uh, nothing else to talk about until you start doing 
some more advanced arithmetic operations. And there are things that we will need to talk about complex number 4. But uh, we are skipping this concept from this class as we just want to stick to basic arithmetic operation, addition, multiplication, subtractions and division. And it's a guarantee that we won't need any other numbers when we are working on real number set with respect to these operations. Okay. So, this is kind of saying that the real number, the set of real number is closed. It's a kind of nice, it says that we don't need to talk of any other number, at least quite for a while. Alright, so now this subtraction example shows another important point, you know, the order mattered here, okay. Observe that 7 minus 5 was 2 and 5 minus 7 was minus 2. The order matters, huh? understand it? The fancy way to say that order matters is calling it as a commutative property. This says that if I take any two numbers, x and y, and I add them, okay, or if I multiply them, so you know that x plus y will be always equal to y plus x, and x times y will be always equal to y times x. So, you know this, right? That if I take 5 plus 7, this is equal to 7 plus 5. Or if I take any other irrational number, whatever be the number, any complicated number, say uh, pi plus Euler number, this equals Euler number plus pi, or root 2 times pi equals pi times root 2. So, whatever be the order, whatever be the number, I don't care positive, negative, square roots, you take any number, pi, Euler number, who cares, it doesn't matter, you switch the order, the result will remain always same. So, the informal way to say commutative is, order does not matter. This is an important point to realize though, that if you notice that I am only focusing on addition and multiplication. Well, why do I care about that? Because when you have a new property, you know, I want you to let you think that uh, about what it is and what it is not commutative, okay. And the fancy way we, uh, we are uh, showing here that we say addition on the reals is commutative, multiplications on the reals is commutative. But we have just seen that subtraction is not, yeah, subtraction is not commutative, right, 5 minus 7 is not equal to 7 minus 5, yeah. Think about it for yourself. Pause the video and tell me, is division commutative or it is not commutative? And that saying, does order matter? And hopefully, it doesn't take too long for you to come up with some counter example to show that uh, division is also not commutative. Yeah? You pick any two numbers you want. How about uh, 6 and 7 again? So, 6 divided by 7 is definitely not equal to 7 divided by 6, right? This side is less than 1 and this one is greater than 1. So, they are just two different numbers, correct? The real numbers, some operations are commutative and some are not. And uh, what's nice about this is we tend to just focus on addition and multiplication. You will see or you will think about it as subtraction is really just addition of negative numbers, correct? We will deal with that later, but uh, we tend to focus on the properties that are nicer. Having said that, if you master on addition and multiplication, you kind of get really good at subtraction and division, yeah? Now, Let's talk about another property that we like. This is associative property. Yeah? The associative property says that if I have any three numbers and I put a parenthesis wherever I want. So, x plus 
y plus z is the same as x plus y plus z. It doesn't matter how one place the parenthesis. Again, note here that this is true for addition and it is also true for multiplication also. So if I have x times y times z, this equals x times y times z. That is exactly the same as if I move the parenthesis around x times y. So you have it for addition and multiplication again. And I leave it as an exercise to you to show that subtractions and divisions are not associative. The associative property once again similar to commutative. Only addition and multiplication have this property. Subtractions and division do not. Come up with some counter examples. You pick it out. Try yourself. So this says what when you start uh, introducing more numbers like uh, 3 in a term or 4 or whatever. It doesn't matter the order at which you sort of start the problem. The associative property says the result will remain same. We also have identities in the set of real numbers. So we have the 0 as the additive identity, we have 1 as our multiplicative identity. So by additive identity we means that if we take any number and add it to 0, we will get that number itself. Yeah. Similarly, if we multiply any number by 1, if I have 1 times any number, I will get back that number itself as well. Correct? So, this is our additive identity is 0 and multiplicative identity is 1. And then since we have addition and multiplication, we tend to talk about the distribution property also. And this will be the last one. This is another important property which talks about how does multiplication and addition play together nice, a very nice feature they produce. So, if I have a number x and we multiply it by some addition say y plus z well you know this is sort of bringing into both together and you get as x times y plus x times z this just formalizes that process make sure that uh, nothing bad can happen and it guarantees that all steps that you know and you love to work will uh, this also work quite well here okay so with these definitions and properties, uh, if you want to get more fluency in the language of mathematics, you should better start talking about the commutative property, the associative property, the, the, the distributive property, the identity property. Even though most people avoid this and they just reference this whenever needed, but you should see a direction whenever somebody is talking about it. I want you to keep in mind in the back of your mind that what these are and what these are not. And one more thing you should remember that addition and multiplication tend to be the nicer ones. While subtractions and divisions tend not to be the good ones. Okay.